just got an unlikely hit as a talking computer in Red Dwarf, but uh, followers of stand-up comedy will probably know him better as the man with time and spiders on his hand. Please welcome Mr. Norman Lovett. <laughs> You don't, uh, you don't speak Welsh, Norman? Not, not, not today. Well, I'll probably be number two. <laughs> number two or three this week, then. Now, I was reading uh, about, uh, about you, and apparently before you go on stage, you always... It was a very kind of cryptic quote. It said, you check the three Fs. Yeah. Before you go. What yeah, are the three right. Fs, Norman? Well, um, once I went on and did a gig, if you see that flap, and I went out uh, in front of the mic, as I do in the audience that I am now, but the mic's not here now. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> and uh, it's there, it's a smaller one, but you usually have a, a flat one. <laughs> and the flat was then, some, I started talking and no one took much notice of what I was saying, and uh, they kept looking at the flat it, that was in, I had one in, see, like that, and going, oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw what it was, and I, I moved, eased it out, and got on with the performance and got by, got by, you know, survived. <laughs> <laughs> but, so now I've got a rule of three Fs is the flies, which is an old traditional one. Check your flies, yeah. flaps, and face the right way. So, <laughs> that's what I did. The secret of your success, or part oh, of it. Thanks for the, that, that, that's very much. Three or four people in the audience, I enjoyed that gag, Norman. Well, the three or four people that knew me, probably. Now, <laughs> I said in the introduction there, you're a man with time on your hands and also spiders, because I know you you kind of got an interest in insects. Are you fond of insects? I uh, living alone for so long. <laughs> you tend to get friendly with them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if there's no one else to talk to and they're there, you, you communicate, yeah, sure. You got any favourites in the insect world? Ants. There's an ant that lives in my kitchen, which uh, I'm particularly fond of. He's my favourite, really. Archie. <laughs> <laughs> He's all right. <laughs> He's been there and back, I can tell you. <laughs> There's nothing better than an ant that's lived yeah. now, is there? Live on the edge, like yeah. me, and we share that same that, tension that and that excitement quest, of yeah. life. Quest know? for excitement, Norman, is what Quest. You... What about the Ruby Wax Show? No, the Ruby Wax Show, you were on the Ruby Wax did you, did you enjoy doing that? We did two series of that, um, 16 shows all together, and... Uh, I enjoyed one of them, I think. I enjoyed one of them. <laughs> I, think, I think we all enjoyed one as well, didn't we? Like, <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't mean that. No. Um, she's got talent. She's got talent. She's she, good. She she's, has, and yeah, she's, she's, she's got a new show funny. on Channel 4 soon. She's been to Miami, I think, Florida. Yeah, she's done a documentary in Miami and uh, one in Russia. And I saw that I've seen a preview because I'm in the business. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and it's, it's, I must say, it's, it's good. How did you get, how did you, uh, how did you get on with Ruby? Do you, are you friends? Do you get on well? Well, you know, we speak while we did the shows. We, we spoke then. And <laughs> <laughs> now, she's got a baby due soon, I believe. Yeah, any time now. And any a showbiz rumour is, it's yours. Is there any truth in that, Norman? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I've been so busy, you know, once you do one thing, you do another. And it, but I don't know, I'm not sure. I'll have to look at it when it comes along. <laughs> What about Red Dwarf? In Red Dwarf, you played a computer, which was a, an yeah. unusual part to get. Were you, were Holly, you excited about yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it was a. I felt all my life, I felt that I could play a computer. And uh, <laughs> when the chance came, I took it. I took that mother. You know, and, and, uh, <laughs> uh, what about the people on Red Dwarf? Do you get on with them? Do you want to talk about Craig Charles, maybe? or No. No. <laughs> Now, the, I know when the first series, there have been two series of Red Dwarf, is that right? There's been two, and we've got a cult following that's building up steadily all the time, and I think the third series will really kick bottom, butt, ass, whatever you want to <laughs> say. Whatever you want to say. It's going to really do it, you know, it's, it's, it's good. We'll look forward to good it. Good programme. Now, you've just come back from Scotland. I know. Edinburgh, yeah. Edinburgh, also yep. known as Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing there? You caught me there. Yeah. <laughs> Geography. I was useless at geography. I got an O level. I can't even say it. <laughs> yeah, that was that wasn't very good, was it? But it was there was a, there was a question hidden there as well, Norman. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I have. I just got back. I've been there for two weeks, and uh, now I'm back here. So what, in you, what have you? The question was, what have you been doing up there, Norman? Um, uh, just a, a friend up there I've been staying with, and uh, I had a bit of business to do. <laughs> so what is, this? is this? Is this romance in the air, Norman? Possibly. Yes, possibly. Well, it, yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. 
And what, a romantic be... interest with the city and the person. So you as might well. be. Will you be moving up there to stay, perhaps? Or I am moving up there. Yeah. And will you be getting work up there? Do you think, or what? I hope so, because otherwise I'll be moving back. Well, maybe. <laughs> And you thought romance was dead, did you? <laughs> well, you could announce it now and you wouldn't have to send out cards telling people you changed the dress, you see. You could say you're going to Edinburgh. Yeah, I can't say the address, though. But cannot. you could do. No, well, I won't. Well, yeah. <laughs> she wouldn't be very now, happy about that. You've been... Yeah, I should imagine. You've been on lots of other people's shows. We mentioned Ruby Redwall. Are you going to get a show of your own, do you think? Is that lined up? Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I got commissioned to write a pilot with BBC Glasgow. And uh, I've written... If you don't be quiet, I'll, uh, <laughs> you'll be out. You know, whatever you do, don't make you'll this man be out. angry. You know, you want to see the rest of this show? Don't mess with me. <laughs> <laughs> that told him. <them. laughs> um, the happen. pilot, yeah, and uh, I've written it, and they like it, and I'm waiting for one big man in down here in London to give it the final nod, and he's humming and hawing at the moment. Is so. this BBC One or BBC Two? BBC it? Two. So that would be Alan Yentob then. That's the man. So, uh, Alan, we should put some pressure on that. But he spent all his money buying Clive James, I believe, so... Yeah, well, he's got no hair either, so he, uh, <laughs> that could win me over, really. Well, is it true you're bringing out your autobiography? I read you were going to write your autobiography. Well, I've got part of that, uh, bald, left-handed and half Italian, which is what I am. And that's the title of it. I've got that, <laughs> the title. And in another 10, 20 years, i do the books. But the titles are important. They're important things. That to title have. would sell as well, wouldn't it? I reckon, I reckon. <laughs> People might think it was Mussolini's sort of biography, though. You don't know. Or maybe well, not. Well, yeah, I get that. I get that, because it's... Uh, that's that, Norman, let me ask you about your mother. I know you're very close to your My mother. My mother is someone. Italian. Yeah, that's a half Italian <laughs> bit, yeah. <laughs> Have you been to see her recently? Do you visit her a lot? Yes, yeah, I go to see her, uh, you know, as much as I can, yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Any funny stories about going to see your mother you'd care to share with well, us? Well, the story you're obviously uh, <laughs> reaching for here is one we've obviously discussed before. <laughs> <laughs> You know what people love, people love about this show? You can't see the seams, do you? <laughs> I took an eel at uh, Clapton, where she comes from. My mother lives. She couldn't get any eels. She hadn't had eels for a long time, long, long time. And I picked an eel up in London, uh, live, two and a half pound eel. I put it in three bags in case it started to gnaw its way out. Oh, and it was alive. One alive. bag inside the other, not three separate bags. Not. I put the bags all in the oh, eel. I no, I didn't. That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Wrapped it up in the bag, got to Clapton a couple of hours later, and we opened it. I said, Mum, look, I've got you a surprise. And when the air went in, the, the lungs filled out on the eel, and it sprung to life. It sprung right out all around the kitchen. We had to chase it and everything. But we got it, we got it, we got it. <laughs> and we okay. ate it. Now, Norman, I know one other, there's one other aspect to your career that you're thinking of uh, heading off into is, is singing. You're thinking of becoming a singer. Yeah, yeah. What kind of songs will you be doing? Um, I've got some here that I'm going to cover. I'm going to work on these. Uh, the chirpy, chirpy, cheap, cheap one I think could be more serious. So. <laughs> um, whole lot of love. That's a good up tempo yeah, yeah. belter. I wanna, yeah. I'd really think that could be covered better. Jailhouse rock. I can see you doing that. Yeah. And dark side of the moon. I'd like to sing that completely. Well, the, the, <laughs> one album. I'd like to do the album. Norman Lovett sings dark side. Well, of the I moon. think any chance of you doing a burst tonight? What well, do you think, ladies and gentlemen? A bit of a bit of Norman yeah. singing. There's a song, there's a song called War. I know, a, a belter of a song. Edwin Starr. You know that one, boys? And uh, I'd, like yeah, to, I'd like to give, you know, that's the one I'd like to do. We have a mic for such a For the first time ever on, uh, on British TV, I believe it's Norman Lovett singing with Stephen Over and the Playboys, and it's going to be War, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Just don't like it. War. Say it again. I will. War. I just don't like it. War means destruction. War means death. I just don't like it. War. What's it good for? Absolutely nothing. 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 Yeah. War. That was great, Norman. 
Was it my imagination, or did that remind you all of the young Elvis Presley? I think it was a bit there. Norman, it's been a pleasure having you on. Good luck with the solo series. Hope it happens. Yeah, thank you. Sell out to Edinburgh for me. Norman, love it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Now it's the part of the show that we turn over to you, the viewers. Yes, indeed, it's time for another instalment of Jonathan's Postbag, ladies and gentlemen.